So I just found my old camera, and I think I'm going to, I don't know, I'm, I'm experimenting with it right now. I kind of want to document my show using this camera. But I'm testing it out right now, and I'm going to see how this looks right after I test that. Trying to get it done by April 22. Trying to get at least 180 of these done by April 22. It's all about nostalgia and the past four years of my life which have been in college and how my experiences and the people that I have interacted with have all formed me over these four years. They've added to who I am, they've grown me in different areas and it's going to be a reflection on that growth and on those people and experiences that caused that growth. So right now I'm doing some research into um, grids in one of my art critiques for uh, these paintings. I told my teachers and my classmates my idea of wanting to display them all in the gallery in a big grid and my teachers suggested that I do some research into grids and into the importance of them. Mark, do you have thoughts on grids? I, I like do. the grid. I, I, <laughs> right <now. laughs> I love grids. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I present my work in grids because I feel like it's a democratizing or equalizing of mm -hmm. matter. And so if you want to give everything equal weight, you make everything exactly the same size and you put it in a grid. And then you let the viewer uh, decide what has hierarchy. In a way, you're you're releasing through a grid system. You're releasing. Power. Okay, come in. Hi. Oh. Mm. Look at that. Turn the down. big one. I feel fine. I felt worse last night. I felt like so heavy. Oh, I was so yeah. tired. Yeah, yeah. And my, are, have your eyes been torn? My mom is making me and my sister food um, every day bringing it up to us. We're trying to put it in these paper, these, these disposable um, things so that she doesn't have to touch it after we're done.
despite me and my boyfriend's greatest efforts, we could not get these wood pieces to be the exact same size as each other. So whenever I put these panels together, it's kind of like putting a puzzle together. I have to find the pieces that are equal in length, and if they aren't equal, if they're a little bit off, then I have a piece of sandpaper that I try to sand down the longer one a little bit to make it a little bit more equal. Um, I try to find pieces that are equal, but sometimes it still ends up a little wonky whenever I put it on the board. They take a lot of work to put together, but I do like having control of the whole crafting process. So these panel paintings are created by me from start to finish, aside from, you know, cutting down the tree and getting the wood. So it's, I like that aspect and it's definitely important to know how to craft these little panels because I would be spending so much money if I were buying each one of them. And hopefully the more that I make, the better I will get at making everything even. Um, but for now, hopefully people won't notice the uneven panels whenever they're up in my gallery show. Even though it's a lot of hard work, the process of making is a relaxing activity um, and it's enjoyable to me. All the jewelry you see me wearing in this video, by the way, is from Ana Luisa. They are the sponsor of this video, and they are a jewelry company that specializes in making sustainable jewelry that I've just basically been wearing every single day since it came in the mail. I've really taken to wearing these rings. I think they're beautiful. I usually like to wear um, them in this kind of stacked look. The braided ring is the Chloe, and it is $59, and then the simple gold ring is the Everly, and it is also $59. And Ana Luisa is actually having a really, really good sale right now that you guys should take advantage of. The whole website is buy one, get one 40% off right now, and if you live in the US and you order more than $150 worth of jewelry, then you'll get a free travel case with that. These are really good gifts, guys, and if you haven't gotten Christmas gifts yet, then Ana Luisa is a great place to buy them. Their prices start at $39, so there's something for everybody on there. So make sure to head down to the description of this video, click on the link there, and check out their holiday sale. The idea that I have right now is to make rubbings of all the walls on my campus, all the buildings that I go in, often the buildings that I live in, and potentially put those on all the walls in the gallery to make a new wall. Just listen to this podcast by the American Psychological Associate Association. It really just validated my whole focus on nostalgia and the importance that I feel that it holds. And um, I already felt that it was important, but it's good to have validation from somebody who's like 
and academic? Most of the research available today, including my research, argues that nostalgia serves a number of functions. And the thing that ties them all together is that nostalgia is an emotional experience that unifies. So one example of this is it helps to unite our sense of who we are, our self, our identity, over time. Because over time, we, have, we change constantly. We change in incredible ways. We're not anywhere near the same as we were when we were three years old, for example. And nostalgia, by motivating us to remember the past in our own life, helps to unite us to that authentic self and remind us of who we have been and then compare that to who we feel we are today and that gives us a sense of who we want to be down the road in the future. The other way that nostalgia serves an essential psychological function is that it is a highly social emotion. It connects us to other people and it does that in so many beautiful ways. In the beginning, when we're very young, it's part of what bonds us to the most important people in our life, our parents, our siblings, our friends.